Hello, gorgeous pagan people. My name is Eric, and welcome to Wednesday of Subs Week here on the Pagan Perspective. Oh, it's super cold here. We've just had our winter solstice, so happy belated winter solstice to my friends here in the south and to those of you in the north. I hope you are enjoying the heat of summer. Um, this week we're doing a wild card week, which means that I get to look at whatever question I want to, and I've chosen to revisit the question from Jenny B. We love Jenny from the block. Um, this was back in February. Is it okay in your path? The full the full text, of course, is in the description if you want to read along with me. Um, you might like to. It's a bit of a lengthy one, um, but I'll, I'll read it through as well. The main questions I keep seeing in some of the groups I'm in are, is it okay questions? Is it okay to buy my own tarot deck? Has been coming up a lot recently. Is it okay to have a temporary altar? Is it okay to keep my altar in a cupboard box, you know, wherever? Um, one that really boggled my brain recently was, is it okay to cut my own hair? Uh, it might be interesting to have the host answer the general question of, is it okay within their tradition? Most of the time, people who ask these sort of questions in the group will get the answers, yes, if it works for you, or yes, if it isn't hurting anyone. I don't know if there is much difference between the answers people would get from the traditions represented on the channel, but it seems to be a common anxiety for a lot of people out there. Um, and I think that is a very valid question. And so I, for those who don't know, I've been involved in mystical, magical traditions for uh, just over a decade. Um, but I'm currently working and training within the tradition of Haitian voodoo. Um, and so I, I say this from the tradition of voodoo of what I'm learning so far. Uh, but please understand that I'm no sort of like authority on this topic. Um, this is just my experience and what I'm coming to understand as I'm moving in it and experiencing it. Um, so, the answer, generally speaking, to is it okay, is probably that it's better to not. So I think the issue that we find with a lot of these groups is that you're, you're seeing inst uh, instruction to beginners from other beginners in the paths, and... <clears throat> I think that these traditions, like magic broadly, is something that you really do need a mentor in. Um, somebody who can guide you, and like that whole thing like about being given your first tarot deck, like that's so that you have somebody that you can like learn it from. Um, like like a lot of a lot of these things that we're told we shouldn't do they make sense because <clears throat> like these taboos are are built out of the idea that things are unsafe or unclean right um so like you know we don't eat shellfish because shellfish takes forever to break down and it stinks up the whole town therefore s shellfish is an abomination um <clears throat> like it's not it's not like these things are are inherently evil it's just that they're unsafe or unclean um it's like you know don't walk under a ladder because you might knock it and the person will fall down <laughs> um these are the kind of things that um are sort of built into like superstition uh which i think is a pretty insidious term um so i think that a question like can i cut my own hair is probably rooted in that kind of in that kind of thought pattern um but I think that, like, for me, so, there, there is certain taboos that have been placed on me. Um, so I had a reading with a Babalawo, and he told me that, like, in Cuba, you would quite often see Santeros walking around, and no matter what the weather was like, they had an umbrella. Um, and sort of one of the taboos that he sort of placed on me in my reading was... Um, that I shouldn't go in the rain. So, because like rain and like water is like a spiritual conduit. So when you're out in the rain, the rain is picking up all that energy that's around and it starts to like cling to your physical body and thus your energy body. Um, and so like that's, that's pretty logical, right? And it makes perfect sense, but it's all about insulation and safety. So like from what he said, like Aoife is very much about like cleanliness and about like insulating yourself from others and the influence of other things. Um, that's like a whole part of like why we wear white in the ATRs, right? Because uh, black absorbs color, right? So it draws things in, whereas the white uh, reflects it and keeps it out. 
Um, so when we, we wrap our head in, in white, we're like keeping that crown uh, safe from outside influence sort of thing um, is how I'm coming to understand it, right? Um, so this idea of insulation and cleanliness um, is a big focus there. And so because of that, um, there is this then ritualistic aspect of the taboos that are being placed. Um, I do want to go back and like a answer each of your each of your individual questions that you actually put in there um, and give some of my thoughts on them. But just like generally, um, like these are questions that should be put forward to a priest, to a mentor. Um, I think that can answer those questions with the experience and wisdom necessary to to give advice on those things. And I think a lot of these do depend on your tradition. Um, but it's sort of like, uh, if I'm, if I'm wanting to serve a spirit or something, you know, you work with the Lua or something and I, I ask my mentor how to do it and then I go to do it and I realize, oh, I, I don't have this thing, but I do have this thing. If I reach out to them and I don't get an answer, I'm not going to go through with it. Um, because it's better to not than to do something that might offend the spirits or be dangerous or, or whatever. It's better to... Yeah, it's just generally better to not, <laughs> um, is kind of the vibe that I get. And so I think that maybe that's a unique perspective as opposed to this, if it feels right, do it, um, that, that is so constantly echoed. I think that, you know, having somebody who has experience that you can go to, who you trust, who can answer these kind of questions for you and do divination on these kind of things is is really really valuable i think when you're having those kind of questions at the beginning of your path um but look let me look at the the individual questions as well and see if i can provide some further thoughts on it so on this topic of can i buy my own tarot deck um tarot isn't really like a part of voodoo um but i do i i have done cartomancy professionally for you know 10 odd years um, so I, I do have a lot of experience with tarot, so I do have some th thoughts on this, but these aren't necessary, necessarily reflected by my tradition. Um, so I said before about how uh, the whole thing about being gifted a tarot deck is that you have someone to learn from. So I think that as long as you have access to materials and even things like uh, Kellyanne Maddox's uh, trainee tarot course that she has here on YouTube, which is free and like wonderful and like was really important in my learning of tarot as well um, and like bettering my skills and understanding of it so you know definitely I think if you have access to the to the materials to learn from and like even a copy of like Book T from the Golden Dawn doesn't hurt and um, you know just Arthur Edward Waite's book on the writer tarot um, I don't see I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't buy your own tarot deck that said I was gifted my first tarot deck so I can't speak experientially there, but I think that, um, you know, as long as, as long as you can learn how to use it, I think it's fine. Um, is it okay to have a temporary altar? Uh, my experience in Solomonic magic might be interesting here. So in Solomonic magic, we work in a temporary circle, um, and a, a temporary temple thereby. Uh, the circle is like a moving temple. Um, and this is something that you see in Wicca as well. Um, so like, permanent altars aren't really a thing in that tradition um, and that's the same for Wicca and thereby a lot of neo-pagan traditions like you like you don't you don't necessarily need to maintain an altar in your home and a lot of the texts and rituals aren't based on like a daily practice it's about you know meeting once a month and better it be when the moon is full um, so I think that like having a permanent altar is going to be very much based in your tradition uh, working in voodoo now, I, I definitely have uh, permanent altars uh, that it wouldn't be appropriate, I don't think, to have as temporary altars. But, I mean, like all things, I would have to ask my mentor if that was something that was required that I meet, that I have something that can be stored away, I would need to be able to make sure that there's some sort of compromise and it would be my mentor's experience and guidance that would help me through to, to answer that question and to, to figure out how to work through that issue. Um, so just to like hammer home my point again, um, that's you know why it's so important to have a mentor, somebody you can lean on. Um, is it okay to keep my altar in a box cupboard in a particular room? 
Um, again, if you're working in that Wiccan tradition, you probably would keep your your altar, you know, boxed up. Um, I've seen a lot of people in ATRs talk about not having altars in the bedroom, and I think there are a few good reasons for that. Um, like, first and foremost, if you had, like, your ancestors in your bedroom, like, you don't want to get changed in front of your granny. Um, like, that's not really appropriate. Uh, so I can see why you wouldn't want to have certain uh, spirits in the bedroom. I think as well, like, the influence of certain spirits. Like, if you were to have, like, uh, Anael, you know, the the vin venereal Venusian uh, archangel. Um, if you were to keep her in your altar, you might uh, keep her altar in your bedroom. You might find that you would have, like... Uh, a lot of strange like romantic and sexual experiences because of that and it might not be conducive necessarily to the kind of thing you're trying to invite like she might be better placed in the bathroom where uh you beautify and cleanse yourself uh which is you know very venusian as well um so yeah i think that like it would depend on the spirit but i think for the most part you're not going to want those kind of influences in the place where you sleep um, you know, and just like wearing white in ritual, a lot of people in ATRs have white bed sheets for the same kind of reason, um, to ensure like purity in their dreams and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like, I would probably want to insulate that space from any sort of like, like specific spiritual kind of thing as a general rule, I think. Um, but again, if that was something that you had to do because of space, like, or that I had to do because of space, I might talk to my, my mentor about like, you know, covering the altar and only opening it when I needed to do the service to them or something like that. So I think, um, yeah, a lot of this, a lot of this comes down to nuance, um, really. Can I cut my own hair? I'm not sure that I have any thoughts on this necessarily, but there are a few things. They said, they say that like, um, a witch's hair holds power, right? That's like a folkloric kind of thing. Um, and like you would hang a pendulum from, like a ring from a, a strand of hair. Uh, better it be a witch's hair uh, to use it as a pendulum. Um, so there are some things I think that come back to hair. There are some cultures where women do not cut their hair at all. Um, there are cultures where women have to cover their hair. Um, so there's definitely like, something to be said about the power of hair. Um, but I don't necessarily know of anything in, like, the Western mystery traditions that indicate that you should not cut your own hair. Um, I think there's some hoodoo works where if you can obtain someone's hair and, like, throw it into flowing water, it will send them crazy. Um, that, that might actually be a European folklore spell, even. Um, but, yeah... Um, there's probably something to be said about hair and the cutting of it. Um, I do often think when I go to a barber, like, oh, should I take it with me? Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Gosh, I'm so cold. I'm like shivering as I make this video. Um, but yeah, I think that's some general thoughts on this topic. But like I say, like, the important thing is to seek out a mentor that you gel with, gel with and that you trust. Um, and that if they say not to do something, that they probably have good reason for it. Um, yeah, I guess that's all that I'm gonna say for now, uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, it's been cool to check in, and I will speak to you next time. Alright, I hope you're well. Mwah. Bye!